I'm in a different building now. I'm here in building nine. This is where the Pro Street Machines is. And just look around me, like honestly, as soon as I walked in here, I was like, wow, there is so many beautiful cars here. There's so many amazing machines. And then I saw Tim and I was like, Tim, I need to see you. Tim, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I've been wanting to check out some of your cars for a while now. Yep. And I'm glad that you've actually got something here today. Yep, last time we talked at SEMA this year and I was just wandering around doing SEMA stuff. So, yep. yep. But now we've got you here, Tim Strange from Strange Motion. Yep. Let's have a look at what you've got. You've got a beautiful Chevelle. Well, I build customer cars. This is my 30th year running Strange Motion now. But this one's kind of special because me and my dad did this together. Uh, this car was originally owned and when I was in high school by a buddy. It sat abandoned for a while, he tore it apart. Me and my dad bought it and kind of did it together. Even though I live in Tennessee and he lives in Illinois, but he came down four or five different times, spent a week. I took the week off with customer cars and we worked on it together, so it was pretty cool. So when they put together this, every year building nine here at the Grand National Roadster Show is an invite building. Last year was trucks and vans. They've had Tri-5 Chevys, past Riddler and AMBR winners have been in here. So we had a vehicle in here we built for Royal Purple Oil that was in the truck and van display here last year. So this year they reached out to us. They did, it's called Street Machines Then and Now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was pretty honored. This little group right here, my buddies that modern street machines from we've built in the last few years modern street you know, this, this it's very heavy pro street cars from the 80s and early 90s in here which is awesome because a lot of these guys are my good buddies all the cars up front that were built in like 84 88 and uh, those are the cars i grew up on going to street machine nationals as a teenager so those are like my hero cars of stuff so it's pretty cool you know i've done a lot of cool stuff in the industry and shown everywhere to have a car invited for here with my hot rod heroes in the same building is it's pretty special experience here congratulations on yeah. that i mean around you we can just see it so what my understanding is street machines then and now because these were muscle cars these were already the coolest cars yeah. to have of yeah. their time and now moving forward to the present day these all have been modified so they've been yeah. taken from being just an ordinary muscle car to an absolute street yeah. machine. Yeah, yeah, and Pro Street, you know, or like street drag cars with the big tires is Pro Street. You no, know, they fell in love with Pro Stock drag cars back in the 80s. Hey, let's build them for the street. And, you know, a lot of these, it was a, they called them trailer queens or uh, fairgrounds cruisers because uh, some of these twin turbo, two, you know, stainless chassis, they never really went out on the road, but they always, at the shows, oh, every two hours they did a fairgrounds cruise, all yeah. the Pro Streeters and people just, lined up so it was yeah that, i never of, missed the street machine nationals as a kid a lot of these cars do get driven around we know people who drive these cars all the time yeah and this is my buddy chris ryan over here he's kind of known for building customs but he built himself this is his personal car he built out of his shop a handful of years ago t-top trans am and he's autocross this at good guy shows and a stuff too trans am is that what you said <laughs> Yeah, it's a T-top Trans Am. It's got wow. T-tops, and so he custom. also has, you know, he's a custom lead sled builder, but he likes the 80s stuff, too, so he's got a couple IROC Zs at home and everything, so. Wow, love the creativity behind it. Yep. Your 65 Chevelle speaks all on its own, Tim. Yeah, we did a lot of modifying to this. It looks like a 60s hot rod. My dad likes early inspired stuff, so it's got uh, American Rebels that look like Halibrands, 15s and 16s, but there's a lot of chassis work done to it. The, the front cross member's narrowed two inches. It's kicked up in the frame seven inches. It's mini tub seven inches. The rear frame's kicked up seven inches. The body's actually cut loose and channeled an inch and a half over the body to get the body sitting lower and still have ground clearance. Um, the motor is shoved back into the firewall seven inches. So you can see up here, the, the distributor's actually cut clear into the cowl. Normally the distributor would be clear up here and it's back here because I shoved that motor back so far, kind of like an old drag car. So you can see that's a big block you see the radiators here so the motor has been pushed back so much there and up for ground clearance because there's no air ride on it it's on uh, coilovers all the way around and it's all finished underneath the body's all or the chassis all body worked and smoothed and painted polished aluminum rear end so it's as pretty on the bottom as it is up on the top there so. is so much work involved here team and we've not really drove it yet we've kind of we show them a couple years when first did you, when did you finish it <laughs> Well, it's still not really done. I got to do some other stuff too because it's my car. But yep. it actually went to the SEMA show in the Royal Purple booth two years ago. Okay. As a non-runner, pushing it in because they wanted it kind of last minute, and then got busy with customer cars. And uh, this summer, we actually started driving it and taking it to events on the outdoor show. So okay. took it, 
didn't have time to do anything with the year after SEMA, and then uh, it was in last well, I month. Mean, you've got a business, and customer scars always yeah, come yeah, first. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. You've got your priorities straight, but mate, I mean, I'm loving the way this engine is like cushioned. It looks like it's cushioned inside here. Yep. Looking so comfortable. And we put the fin valve covers and air cleaners, kind of 60 inspired hot rod. Well, and, and what block is that? It, it is a 454 punched out to uh, a little over 500 cubic inches. Wow. And then the story on the inside of the interior is my dad built a lot of cars growing up, and he always put 62 to 64 Impala bucket seats in them. Okay. So my dad was always impressed as a little kid that I remembered all the stuff that he built. So these are 62 Impala bucket seats based with the chrome. And my buddy Mike Regula did, you know, we wanted the, the 60s pleats. And this is like a 5960 Cadillac material. And then even the little details, like on this side, you can see there's a clear plastic cheap floor mat. Are we able mat. to open the door without hitting your buddy's car? Carefully, yep. So it's kind of messed up there. That's all right. I want to check out this door panel first but, because I did like the interiors. But my dad always ran out of money and went to Kmart and bought cheap plastic floor mats. So I found <laughs> some on Amazon for 15 bucks and put them in there. And then the Hearst shifter boot, the big vintage shifter boot, he always put those in his cars too. So he thought that was cool that it had Impala seats, the clear floor mats blew his mind away, and then the big Hearst shifter boot. I absolutely love that. You know, honestly, your dad did that just out of basic necessity. You know, Yeah, yeah. you got to have something. a floor mat. And let's go to Kmart. Yeah, let's go to Kmart. Yeah, but yeah. you remembered that. Yeah. And that stuck yeah, with you. Yeah, from when I was like eight years old. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm um, not eight years old anymore. <laughs> no, you really? <laughs> wow, but check this out, everybody. So that's pretty much stock, the dash? Yeah, stock panel. I got a radio delete plant panel. Uh, the baseline Chevelles and Malibus didn't have a padded dash. They had more cars with padded dashes. This one did not, so we didn't put a padded dash in it. And I did some modern stuff. It's got Dakota digital gauges, and I did it steering column, kicker stereo, Bluetooth. You know, some modern conveniences in, in the car and modeled the, like I said, the Impala bucket seats and me and my dad shaped the foam and did the back and then Mike Regula covered them, but we modeled the seats and the bit, middle speaker grill are 62 Impala also. Wow. You know, you've, it looks like you've chopped the top even though you haven't. It's just yeah. been lowered. Yeah, the, the body is pretty much stock on the outside, shaved all the moldings off and took all the, you know, the emblems off of it. Um, That's why it's got such a clean finish on the, the side. The hood, the hood scoop was a necessity because as low as the car is and where the motor had to sit for ground clearance, so I had to build some kind of a scoop. Uh, some of my buddies don't like the scoop, but I don't care. It's our car. Yeah, but um, the, even the scoop is not just a normal, regular scoop. Yeah, it's, the fine detail here, you it's actually it. modeled after... Uh, I was a big fan of Baldwin Motion cars in the 70s and 60s. Um, and my shop, Strange Motion, so that's kind of, I love Baldwin Motion muscle cars. And this is actually modeled after I got a Baldwin Motion book. The, they did this hood scoop on a 70 Nova Baldwin Motion car. This one needed to be about three quarters of an inch taller because of the clearance of the motor. So that was modeled after a Baldwin Motion car. Like I took pictures out of an old book, scaled it, made cardboard templates to the whole shape and everything as a Baldwin Motion scoop. Tim Strange, everybody, is you've got an extensive history in the hot rodding world. Yep. Hall of Fame and inducted as well. Yep, two well, Hall of Fames. Two Hall of yeah. Fames, exactly. And multiple, um, what is it, the ACIS? Did I say that right? You've got the rings as well. Yep. Oh, there it run, is. Rod and Custom Hall of Fame ring. Rod so, and Custom yep. Hall of Fame. Yep. And then you've got your shop. Very, very high and very amazing custom builds. You know, just to get a customer is pretty hard because you've already got your work cut out for you. Yeah. You've got so much work, so many customers. Yeah. And I can't even get in there because there are cars that are getting built that it's not allowed to be yeah, shown. Yeah, I have three that I'm not allowed to take pictures of her customers. Are, she's like, I want to come. <laughs> no, you can't. So. One day, one of these days. Yeah. And I mean, looking at this, you're like, wow, that's a nice sleek car, but there is so much more involved in it. There's so much details here. And you can just see, like you said, the spacing here, just putting the engine back, I mean, I'm loving it, you guys. I am going back here. And the hood hinges. It's such a clean finish. And even though it's a clean finish and the trim's been taken off, a lot of the glitter on the outside, it allows us to see the body line mm -hmm. a lot more clearer. I want to see if you guys can see in the picture here. Check that out. And this is kind of a color that... I just kind of call strange motion blue. I did a 50 Chevy fleet line 
I don't know, about eight years ago, we took to the SEMA show that was this color. I have a bicycle that's painted this color. I have equipment and cabinets that's all so this, this color. So favorite color. Yeah, I'm doing a 90, uh, 92 Chevy OBS pickup truck that's going to be the same color. Oh, so nice. I just, uh, yeah, it's so a good color. So when that's finished, you need to line, up, line them all up. Yeah, right. And have me yeah. come over and have yeah. a look at it and film it. Look at the speakers. So who's going to be driving this, you or your dad? A little bit of both. I want to finish a couple more show things um, for the midsummer, and then when Dad will get it in Illinois, uh, he will be the first thing he will do. He is 75 years old, and he will go to a burnout immediately when he gets in the car. So he likes He's to abuse his cars. <laughs> yeah, his farm has burnouts all up in front, in front of the house. So yeah. what a cool man. <laughs> This is pretty cool, man. You know, I'm so glad that I was able to see you and see one of your builds. Heard a lot about it, and I know you guys do amazing work, but to see it here, it's, no, I appreciate this. How are you enjoying the Grand National Roaster Show? Oh, it's great. You know, I, you go to I, I probably brought cars out here probably eight, seven, eight times through the years. We've showed heavily with show cars with mirrors and everything underneath of it. Uh, the invite, the, what I call kind of the history building, is way more relaxing. They don't judge them. That's why you've seen cleaning rags laying in there. This is like it's a hangout. You get a participation plaque of the logo of the sign and everything. And uh, you just kind of hang out with your buddies and talk. And then you get to go look at all the other stuff. It's so. a different vibe here in Building 9. It is. It's a little just laid back. It's, it's very laid yeah. back. I walked in. I was like, Yeah, nice. the Sloniker building and the AMBR building, a little more stressful over there, a yes. lot more on the line. And yes. yeah, a lot of these guys, like I know a lot of the guys from the Midwest, that's came out they've never even been to this show and so it's just it's blowing their mind what even one building and if there's all these buildings then all the outside cars i spent the entire day in one building yesterday oh yeah yeah so i've been uh, here since wednesday set up and i haven't been through all the buildings and yet you haven't seen everything yeah. no i've got to move faster and quicker so i can show you a lot at home and exactly what happens here but i do want to show you guys some of the more of the cars here in building nine it's pretty cool it's pretty cool well, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. No, well, thank you for the time, Tim. Yep. Always a pleasure. We'll see you later. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's continue with Pro Street Cars then and now. That's what's going on here, and there's so many beautiful machines around me, but I'm learning about the history. And Rick here is a big part of the history of Pro Street, builds custom cars, racing as well. So you will do this better than me. Introduce yourself and tell me a little yep. bit about who you are and what you've done. Yeah, my name's Rick Doverton and I'm, uh, I like, I actually, when I started, I liked building cars. Now I don't like doing it too much anymore, <laughs> but I'm still doing it. Um, actually, we spent some time in Australia and it was a great place to visit. I mean, the people, I, we really loved them. They're, Were you building cars in Australia or was it just for a holiday? No, I actually took this car here to Australia for the summer nats and it was their, uh, their first show, and we actually had a. Uh, it, was, it was your um, bicentennial, I believe, '88, and yep. we led the parade through Canberra, which was really good. Wow! Really, really fun. You're not just building regular custom cars; you're making an absolute Pro Street cars. Right. Now, Pro Street is a is a style. It's with the big tires in the back, and the small in the front, and the big engines and everything. It's it's fashioned after a drag car, but they're still street legal. Mm -hmm. That's what we love about them, that they can look like this and still be street legal. Right. Here in America, of course, not everywhere. Right. Yep. True. <laughs> so, sir, tell me, Rick, how did all of this begin for you? I mean, you over there, so many people know you and signing autographs. You're very well known in the industry. What was it that really got you to where you are today? You mean as far as the notoriety and stuff? Mm -hmm. It would be this, well, it's actually this Blue Nova over here. Let's come and have a look at this. That was uh, Hot Rod Magazine's 1982 car of the year. And the thing that sets this apart is the engine has two turbochargers plus the supercharger. There's two turbos and a supercharger. Correct. The turbos are out here, and they feed up into the supercharger, oh, yeah. and then down into the engine. I've seen some crazy machines, but I've never seen something like this. First question, how loud is it? It's not any louder than anything else. It's, it's well, it's not... <laughs> you say that and then you make yourself laugh. Okay, yeah. go on. <laughs> well, it, it can be loud, but it's muffled pretty good. It's muffled. It depends on the mufflers you have. And, and what is the horsepower? Well, we figure 1,200, somewhere in there. It's not It's not built to, for the maximum boost and everything. You can get more horsepower out of it. 1,200 horsepower is still a lot. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, People would joke, they'd say, you've got 
two turbos but only one supercharger. So our new car, we put two turbos and two superchargers in it. Okay. That was the yellow one. We went over there in 88 and... Uh, this is beautiful. Well, thanks. You've done the entire work yourself and... Um, I don't do the paint or the upholstery. The paint or the upholstery, right. but what about the body lines? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty straight car. You like to race? I, yeah, I did for a while, but it got so expensive, and the competition was, you know, with all the factory sponsored stuff and everything, it, you just couldn't compete. So I still like building the cars, so I just built them, sold a few. We actually built a, took an old milk tanker, stainless steel milk tanker, made it into an amphibious car, and tried to go around the world with it. We got the a milk tanker? Yep, we got uh, through. 30, uh, 28 countries and 38 states. Wow, and how deep could it go? Oh, it stays on top. It stays on top? Yep. Okay. It'll go down once. Just one time. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thanks. This is right here at the entrance as we walk in. What is this? What year and model is this? It's a 1985 Pontiac J2000 or what they call them a Sunbird. And this is a twin turbocharged, twin supercharged 350 Chevy. Wow. The pneumatic body, so you can raise it up. The turbos are on either side of the carburetor. They come up here and into the superchargers where they're compressed again. Do you have a passion for engines, sir? I did, but you know how you burn out at certain times? I'm kind because of, you've I'm, done it all. Well, can you go crazier than this? You can go crazy doing it. You can go crazier. For sure. For sure. So, what was the block underneath that again? It's an aluminum 350 Chevy. Aluminum 350 Chevy, twin turbos, and double supercharged. Correct. So, with that extra supercharge on here, now how much horsepower does this generate? This is probably around the same because it's a smaller engine. That was a 454, this is a 350. Because the block is smaller. Right. Now, with the turbos and stuff and the belts, you can change your ratios, change your tur turbo boost, you can make a lot more horsepower. But I've got it toned down because I don't want to be rebuilding it because I blew it up. And how did you fall into this world of building such crazy engines and custom cars? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a good question. You should do this for a living. Um, <laughs> It's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a form of expression. You, you know, it gets, uh, cars can be for racing, it can be for get transportation, it can also be just art. And yeah. uh, I always read Hot Rod Magazine and stuff, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be on the cover of Hot Rod again, coming up in about two months. I'm not surprised. So, uh, no, it was, you know, I look at it all the time, everybody, oh my God, that's, I look at it so many days that I just look at it and I don't see what all the excitement's about. You know how it, it gets like that? Because you've built it, you've done it, and I mean, I don't know what to say to that, sir, because how could somebody not get excited over this? <laughs> <laughs> all I can say is you've probably done it for so long, it seems so normal to you, right. that if you were to open up a modern day car and see what they've got under the hood there, how do you think you would feel? As far as looking at a new, I, I stay away from those. I buy my wife's hand-me-down cars. I now, now own a Mazda, a Mazda and uh, I'm going to be owning her Chevy Volt when she buys a new car. So, so what's your daily? My daily, I, I build a uh, suspension kit, a suspension adapter kit to put Corvette suspensions in other cars, and I've sold a lot of them to Australia. Okay, well, tell me about that. Well, it's actually, well, I can say it's at DobertonPerformance.com. And, um, and are these made just for the Corvettes? No, what they are is we take, it, Corvettes have got great suspensions. And these are made to adapt the Corvette suspensions into other cars. Oh, so, so you can got drive a, like a Corvette or right. turn like a Corvette. Exactly. Exactly. And I've sold, I've sold about 400 kits and I've never had a return and everybody always, oh, that was great. And, you know, we, we take something that normally takes weeks to put in and you can do the, with our kits, you can do the uh, rolling chassis in a couple of days. People love that and that's very big right now because so many people are working on cars and doing projects and that at home 
and they like the body styles, but then they need everything to run and function a lot better than what it did right. in the year they came out. Right. And that's where you guys are coming up with these kits. It's just, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, thanks. How do you feel like, make me feel like it's worth it? Oh, it is absolutely oh. worth it because, and also you have to understand is you guys grew up in this. So my generation and people who are just getting into the hot rodding world, we don't have the mechanical skills. Right. So these kits is, is amazing because we it's just it's a bolt-on kit. I'm guessing. Yep. It makes life a lot more easier oh, and yeah. still allows us to be part of the culture. Yep. Yes, it does. And how did you just come up with that? I mean, from building engines, you said, okay, I need to make a better suspension. No, I I'd always toyed with the idea. There's so many cars out there that don't have independent rear suspensions, so. If you could, if you could, in a, the Corvette things are just about impossible to put in. So I figured if we could make these brackets, so you could bolt on the what they call a cradle on the bottom, and then everything would attach to it: the arms, the suspension, the springs, the shocks, everything, and just bolt that whole thing up to your frame, to where you could do it in a couple of hours. They'd sell, and they they do sell. And they did sell, of course. An engineer, very creative. Oh, no engineer. I have an economics degree. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did that because, you know, Tim Strange was telling me about it and he mentioned, he goes, you have to come, you've got to meet these guys, you know, if you mm -hmm. want to find out who's in the industry and what influences right. has ha happened and um, you were right up there. So oh, well, that's, I'm so I'm glad flattered. I met you. No, absolutely. And not only that, I mean, look at what you've built here, for goodness sake. Let's move over here to the other side so I can show everybody some of the um, paint. This way, this way. Okay. Let's go to the front here. Look at this. Do you have... Oops. You didn't do the paint, but what about some of the elements like the hood? Yeah, I did the scoops and stuff. I did the, you know, the, the actual building of the parts, but not the painting. I can, I can paint, but when you got something like this, you should take it to a professional. This is amazing. Looks like a funny car, but yet right. it's got two seats in there. It's a funny car door slammer. Funny car door slammer. Yep. Do the doors open? Yep. Okay, they do. <laughs> yep, when the body's down, you get in just like a regular car. Wow, love it. And then it. you hit your head on the bar. On the front on, bar? I noticed no. that the... And when it's down and collapsed, everything's up tucked in there. But it's a full row cage. Right, oh yeah. And, and you need a full row cage when you're going to have that kind of an engine underneath true, it. True. So I'm glad you didn't do anything half, but this is beautiful. So oh, thanks. Love the hood scoop. Hey, it's been such a pleasure. Did that do it? I got one minute, I'll show you the orbiter. Okay, can I come in? Sure. Thank you. Then I've got to go over for another interview, right? What have you got here? Okay, this is... Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the orbiter. It's an old milk tanker. There's the tanker. Oh, my. Where is this now? It's up in Chicago. I took it to... We were trying to go around the world, so we would made a, a road test. It was down through the Caribbean. We went through 28 countries and 38 states. It was holding up good, but we, we lost the funding for it. So we did... Ended up so selling in, it. in Chicago, is it just the person who owns it, or is it in a museum? It's a private museum kind of thing. A private Where? museum. I want to see that milk tanker, everybody. <laughs> well, uh, I love amphibian cars, and I've actually seen a few military tanks, well, but this that's is, an actual milk tanker. Wow. Here's a. Oh, that's not mine. Oh, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> there. This is a. We built that go kart in a couple days. That's, what, that's our suspension kits, front and back. Mm, and that's what it's good. called, the Corvette Interface? Corvette, well, it's, yeah, we're Doberton Performance is Doberton the site. Doberton Performance. And it's, yeah, it's Corvette Interface cause, because we interface the Corvette stuff into the cars. Love it, absolutely love it. Well, I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time, sir. And, Thank you. And I, All right, everybody, so many cool people here at the American Muscle Cars. Then and now, we've got pro street cars all around me. Rod. Savory, how's it going? <laughs> we cannot have all these machines and big engines without a racer like yourself amongst the mix. Yeah, yeah, I'm a racer, I'm a drag racer. 
Um, I started out with this car pretty much, uh, just a show car, and then I made it into a super stock car. Okay. And, and I actually won a, a small Wally for class, super stock class, and then I put it back on the street. So now well, I'm just showing you. Let's go right back because you gave us a mouthful there. Now, yeah. you started this off and you started drag racing. Yeah, I bought it brand new in 1969. Now this is a Camaro, what year is this? It's a 69 Camaro. 69. I bought it new and I drove it to my high school prom in 1969. Okay, And I wow. still have it. And you still have and it. And five years ago, I drove it to my 50th class reunion. Oh Same my car. What did your friends say? Oh, they what was couldn't the believe it. Yeah, they couldn't believe it. Did One you... of my smart aleck friends says, well, it doesn't look the same as it did back then because it was stock back then, right? Yes. I said, well, we don't look the same either. <laughs> Not 50 years later, right? Hey, Rod, tell me about your drag racing um, history. Tell me a little well, bit about that. Um, I've had some drag cars in the past. This one was my start. Uh, this is how I started out drag racing, super stock class. And uh, this car ran 11 O's. Um, with the 302 and then I had a, uh, a pro street car and and it was I had a 57 Corvette that ran in the sevens that I drove on the street I ac actually drove it on the street wow. and it ran 750s and naturally aspirated no nitrous one one carburetor so what was so special about your racing that you were able to do that with naturally aspirated cars? Well, I think what it was is we were lucky we had a good chassis guy and we came up with a really good combination and we were lucky that we, and fortunate, that we hit the nail on the head the first time. Mm -hmm. We got the combination right, the gear ratios, and it, it just worked out. But uh, that car would run 11-1 in the 60 foot, which is really, this is 30 years ago. And that's really good even now. But then I, the car got too fast to be safe. So Is there I'm, such a thing? Yeah, it didn't have a tube chassis. It was a square tube chassis, and it okay. wasn't set up to go that fast. So I wanted to build a car that was capable of going sixes, still be street-driven, still be street naturally driven. aspirated, yep. but be safe. So I had a friend of mine, John Little, in Littlestown, Pennsylvania, actually built the car. It was a real 53 Corvette. They only made 300 of them. This was one of the 300. Wow. So okay. the Corvette guys didn't like I, that. I was just about to say, all yeah. the Corvette lovers and yeah, they didn't like that there too would much. be saying, what are but, you doing? But the, in my defense, it was a wrecked car. Okay. I bought a wrecked car. It was hit in the back, and then it went up and hit another car, so it was both ends were smashed in. So but I, you chose the Corvette. Must have been a good reason behind that for the handling, or no? I other than this car, I've been a Corvette fan my whole life. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so I had to do a Corvette. You had to do a Corvette. Good for you. I'm glad you did. Now, talk to me about this because it's gone through a few changes. Yeah. What that's was the what, first thing you changed? The first thing I changed on it would be the rear end ratio. Okay. And the car was all stock, obviously, when I bought it. 302 motor, four speed. It had a 411 rear, and I put a 456 rear in it, and it made it a lot faster. Even though the motor was stock, it went a lot faster. And the interesting thing is, when I started racing it exclusively in super stock, of course, it was still a 302, same engine, but you were allowed to do some modifications. Mm -hmm. We did the modifications on the motor, and we started out with the 456 rear, and then we went to a 488, and we kept going lower. Every time we went lower with the rear end gear, it went faster. And I ended up with a 650 rear end gear. You can't go any lower than that because the pinion gets too small. But a 650 rear, and this thing would go 10,000 RPM. How, how does that work for someone like myself who doesn't know too much about the undercarriage by changing, modifying the rear end? And that's what a lot of the junior stockers did. Absolutely. Because yeah. you couldn't um, modify the engine. Right, you couldn't do much. You couldn't do much, and I know this because um, even in Australia, in Bathurst, the, the Holdens, you couldn't modify too much of the yeah. engines and stuff. So, but what I want to know is, how how is that making the car faster by you adjusting the rear end? Well, the 302, being a small cubic inch engine, needs to spin a lot of RPM to make the power. Okay. Yeah, to make the power. Now, yep. when you bought them on the street, they put a 411 in just so it would be streetable. You could drive it down the highway, down, down the beltway or whatever. Yep. But uh, the 456, even, is what I started with, 
it was kind of low for even street driving. You wouldn't want to drive too far. It would really be hard on the engine. It was like driving in second gear all the time, wow. you know? Okay, yeah. But uh, at the racetrack, you're only going a quarter mile. Yes. So you want to get as much out of the engine as you can. And the lower gear you can put in it, the, the more you're going to get out of the engine, especially a small engine. And that's where the rear end comes into play. Absolutely. Because you've got, the, obviously, the gear shaft in the back. Okay, yeah. I, I think I'm getting so, it. With that much, that low rear spinning that high RPM, 10,000 RPM is a lot. Well, it was really hard on things. You wow. know, the dry shaft, the motor. I tell everybody, I broke everything on the car at least once. <laughs> I did. But I mean, that, that's that's the fun of it, isn't it? Because yeah. you don't know you don't know to fix it unless you break it first. Yeah, yeah. I'll, and if you don't break it, then how will you make it better than I, before? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It wow, was good that, that is pretty cool. You know, I learned about the junior strokers. Um, I think it was last year, and I interviewed a few other people and a few other champions as well. So it always fascinated me on how nowadays, modern days, you know, all the modifications get done to the engine. Right. Yeah. So it's fascinating to see that so much could have happened without touching the engine. Keep the car stock so you can still keep take it on the road. Yeah. Because I mean that's what companies wanted. You they wanted you guys to race it so mm -hmm. then they can sell it after you win a race with it. Absolutely, yeah, that was the idea. Wow. This is so cool. I'm so I just jumped inside this building and I've met all of your famous people in here. <laughs> no, we're not famous. I'm like, tell me about yourself, you know. No, people you're there, people know you and they appreciate what you've done, so and I appreciate what you've done right here. Oh, thank you. So, what was the thing you did after adjusting the rear end? Um, mostly, then it became getting the right tire to work, the right tire, rear tire to size to work, and the right compound. There's a lot into that, because most of your ET elapsed time is made up the first 60 feet. Okay. The first 60 feet, once you get the car rolling, you get that momentum going, that contributes to the other end. So the tire, the hard tire hooking up was really important, and they wouldn't let us run wheelie bars. You know, wheelie bars, not back then. Now you now, couldn't even run that. No, in, now in super stock they allow that. They okay. were real strict back then. I even had to run a spare tire and a jack in the trunk. Yes, because you had to change it yourself. Yeah, but, but it was super stock, which means the stock part meant you had to have the stock. Oh, of equipment on the car, you see. So when you change it, you're changing it back to the rules. Yeah. And but this this thing used to stand up pretty high without the wheelie bars. There's pictures of it over there. Let's have and, a look at that. And there's pictures of me in 1977 with the car. You won't even recognize that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look, Rod. Yeah. I'm having an awesome time, everybody. From my footsteps to your screen. Let's have a look. 1977. There you are. What a hunk, honestly. <laughs> Well, my, I didn't realize my legs were that long back then. <laughs> and oh, then, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and this was the uh, York uh, US 30 dragway in York, Pennsylvania in the early 70s. And then this is the same track. And this picture, I'm pretty sure, was from Capitol Raceway in Maryland. But see how it used to stand up? Because without wheelie bars, you didn't know how good the traction was until you went up there and tried it, you know? You couldn't have set the wheelie bars, you know, it just, the car just came up in the air. And then there's some magazine covers it was on. They're back in the early 80s. That's me right there. That was 1983. Pretty sure that was 83 or 82. And then this one has my wife and I and my neighbor. That was the cover of Super Chevy magazine three years ago. <laughs> What's it like for you now, today, standing here amongst all these modified cars? How do you feel? Oh, I, I, it's just like going back to high school again. <laughs> it's like a big reunion. Yeah, well, just like when I drive, and I drive this car on the street. Everyone, you can ask everyone. I drive this thing everywhere. And when I drive this car, because I drove this to my high school, so I feel like I'm Everybody eight, knew you. Yeah, I feel like I'm 18 again. Hey, there's oh, nothing wrong with that. This is, right? that that's exactly what this channel is about. <laughs> you know, I absolutely love it. It's like when we were talking to Charlie before. When cars have got such sentimental value, when you sit down in a car and it gives you memories and takes you down, yeah. and that's nothing, what it's all about. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing yeah. wrong with and that. It's the best thing. And people are lucky and fortunate to be able to have that. Not everybody can, so yeah. good for you. Well, putting money and time in these cars, to me, I always justified it by saying there's a heck of a lot worse things you could be oh, doing. Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's better than paying a therapist. 
There you go. Before we wrap up, Rod, what's the engine now? What have you got um, under the hood? Okay, so this is a 350 cubic inch engine, pretty, pretty common. And um, this engine was built by a friend of mine, Charlie Garrett, in Hanover, Pennsylvania. And it was just freshened by another friend of mine, Mark Small, in Westminster, Maryland. And uh, this is the same engine that was in it when I used to show it back in the 80s. Not when I raced it, that was a 302. But this is a 350, this was in it when I used to show it in the 80s. Now you've got a supercharger and a 671, I'm guessing? Yes, very good. It's, it, it's the same engine, but it definitely does not look like the same engine as it did <laughs> yeah. when you were in high school. Yeah, yeah, it's a little change. You gotta love the blower motors, everybody, and it's just, it's brilliant. Done so well. Hey Rod, I appreciate this. Oh, you're very good at what you do, and I appreciate you. Thank you so the time much. To absolutely. Time with me. No, absolutely. You've, I, I've, you've taught me so much more things, and uh, that's what this journey is about. You know, it is yeah. my journey. It's on. You're on my channel, so I hope you're appreciating and enjoying the things that I'm learning. Um, most of you at home, some of you would know all this stuff, but for me, I, it's new and I love it. So I appreciate your knowledge, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's continue on with Pro Street Cars, then and now. Now, what I've got in front of me is something very different. It's a beautiful Thunderbird. There's a lot happening to it, and I'm going to show you guys. But before that, let's have a chat with the people behind it, Mark and Debbie Hay. Matt. Matt and Debbie Hay. <laughs> I think it is, yeah. There it is, Matt and Debbie Hay. Now, some of you, my viewers, would probably recognize these two, or you would know of some of their work, but I'm here to find out about them before we have a look at the car in detail. So please, Matt and Debbie, tell us before the car about yourselves. I started in about 1975 tinkering on cars. I was a senior in high school, and I like senior in high school has to have a hot car, right? So yep. <laughs> I did whatever I could to a, a, a Mustang that I had driven. Okay. Basically, just wheels and tires and something like that. And then from there, it kind of got a little more involved, a little more involved. And then in 1977, I met Deb. And she supported the, the hobby completely. So then she. Too, so, Debbie, you were a hot rodder as well? Uh, no, I just kind of went in with what he was doing, and it was exciting and fun, and we just teamed up together. I love it. We just kept on going, and every year we just got a little bit better builds and got a little more popular and people started to know us what we were doing so then we got really carried away because we wanted to really get involved in this in this sport so we wanted to build a little something a little better each year and that's wow. what we kept doing several of your builds have been featured on the front covers of the magazines yes yes we've got one right here as well but can you tell me about one that really stuck with both of you now did you start getting your hands dirty as well debbie Oh, yeah. I mean, he was more the engineer type, but I was just like, okay, what do we need to do? Whatever. I was the assistant helping. And wow, you got so out. lucky. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's a keeper. Wow. But maybe she says that to me, too. I'm a keeper. Right? You guys are absolutely sweet, honestly. So let's have a look at the Thunderbird. Where did this come from? What did you start off with? Uh, well, we started off with a brand new Ford Thunderbird, 1988, that Ford gave us to do this. They wanted, they wanted us to customize this this car so this is what we did and, and that was in 1988 and, and the TV show uh, Miami Vice was really big Crockett and Tubbs and back in then everybody was wearing pastel colors so I wanted to do something something pink you know something different that nobody's done so I thought pink would be a good choice to start doing something different and then we went ahead and build a, built a motor and, and induction system that nobody else had either. We just was. It's very different. Yes. Matt, can you talk to me about the motor? What's happening here? Well, it's a Ford 351 motor with dual uh, B&M superchargers up front, which is uh, something I just came up with. I wanted to do that, but when I when I got this configuration done, I ran out of radiator room, obviously. <laughs> so then we we split the radiators on each side, so it still had the same capacity. I didn't even know you could do that, that you could just split the radiator and... Yep, yes. Yep. So, so you've got the one hose connected got, to both? Yeah, they both come out and go in, and then there's the hoses on the bottom that go back up into the uh, water pump. The whole time you were building the engine, it never occurred to you, I do need to keep this cool somehow. 
and put a radiator well, in there. <laughs> it was in the back of my mind, but the main thing is I really wanted to do, I was really involved in the engineering of the, of the motor and the induction system, and I knew that I was not going to be able to put a conventional uh, radiator up front, so yeah. then that's why I thought, well, we're going to have to fit it in some way. Yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's how that came about. But, uh, well, I'm glad it did because this is what really makes it stand out and memorable to so many people because you yeah. don't see this every day mm -hmm. or at all. Let's have a look here up at the front. <laughs> wow. Supercharged, not once but twice. What is the horsepower? Surprisingly enough, it's, it's only 500 horse. And when I say that, it's a, you can buy a fact factory car today with that much horsepower but we really didn't build this particular car for drag race we built it for the street it's a street legal car but during its time that's a lot of horsepower all yeah time. yes it was now now we're looking you know you've got the dodge demon that comes from the factory at plus a thousand horsepower absolutely but yeah. during those times right. 500 horsepower was a lot. yeah and yeah, i wasn't crazy about you know getting a lot of horsepower out i wanted to make it more you know drivable and whatnot so it, it is, and, and the motors, like I said, it's a 351 a Ford motor, and it, it's just uh, not that high in horsepower. I love, this. I love the design behind it. You know, there is a lot happening here, but you've still been able to keep it so tasteful. Yeah, I yeah. Think the pla yeah, right. Placing it well, like it's just, it's beautiful. It's a functional car. You know, it's, we didn't build it as a show car. We built it as a pro street legal car so it doesn't have a whole lot of flash and and, and and stuff going on in the engine department it's mostly functional yeah but it still looks so good can we go in underneath the rope and sure sure now did ford pick the colors or did you pick the colors i picked the colors yes and why did ford want to do this well we built three or four previous cars that did really well with magazines and whatnot and they they saw that we were legit yeah and they and we were getting tons and tons of uh magazine and media coverage with other cars so it's like anybody else hey let's jump in on this okay because it'll help well, it was a more promoting so i guess ford wanted people to see that you could do so much to their cars if people wanted to customize it that they that you were able to do that exactly with yep. yep so they sent us a brand new car and they wanted us to do what we do, and that's 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 what came up. And then, and then as soon as we finished it, it went to the SEMA show in Las Vegas, and was in the Ford booth. Nice. So that's that it was right there. Wow. It's done really well for us. Debbie, how long did it take? Uh, the entire build. The first time or the second time? <laughs> well, for, well, we yeah. To answer your question, it took a little over, probably about a year and a half to build this car. Wow. Uh, and That's then not too long. The, no, no. Well, we were doing one every two years because we wanted to kind of stay on top of the sport uh, with everybody. And so we were doing, trying to do a car every two years. And that's what she led to is uh, the first or second time. We sold the car in 1992, and it bounced around from different owners. And then in 2013, we restored the car. We bought it back. We bought it back. Bought and we bought it back. Yeah. It needed everything. So. so why did you go looking for it in 2013? Well, well we, we kind of got out of the sport in early 90s because we were raising a family. We have a, a son and a daughter. And it was, it was time that we were doing it for so long. Yeah. We just decided let's let's you know raise a family and do something else. Although we kind of stayed nice. involved with cars. And then in 2013, the uh, Street Machine Nationals, which was held in Decoin, they were having a uh, reunion of sorts. So they called up everybody that used to be there in the 70s and 80s to come back and be part of this reunion. So we went back, and a lot of the guys and girls had cars, their old cars, and we were like, oh, you know, I, I really. Oh. We need to have our car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a rental. So we had previously known who had this car at the time, and we were just talking, we really want to build another car. But then we thought, maybe we should try and find a Thunderbird and buy it back. And it, we, within a several months, we were able to make a deal with the owner and buy it back. We had to drive to Pennsylvania and then bring the car back. And to get it back. Well, I'm so glad you did because you both worked on this as you would have in so many other cars and one of the things that I will be doing is going when I get home is researching Mark and Debbie Hayes cars Matt and Debbie yeah, Hayes cars yeah. I have to look at it because uh, by the sound of things there's been a few oh yeah. yes yes uh, earlier I don't you ask which one's our favorite yeah well, I would have to say this one because we bought it back but this one's really done well for us it's Ravel models that build the model cars they did a 
1990, 1990, they did the first issue, and then in 2013, when we bought the car back, we didn't know that, but they were, they did a reissue. So they, in 2014, the, the reissue came out for the models. And in 2022, Hot Wheels made a Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels made a car of this. Yes, yes Tim mentioned that. Wow. So Hot Wheels, and then it was in the uh, 2019 Super Bowl commercial. In the Super Bowl commercial? Yeah, for Doritos. So that was a, that was. Fun. I'm not American, but I know that's a huge deal. Yeah, it was, it was a huge deal. It was it was fun. We went over and shot the commercial in uh, at the Ontario Airport, California. Chance the rapper. Have you heard of him? Yep. He was in it. He was in it, and the he's commercial was for Doritos. Yeah. And okay. Boys. And they were in it yeah. too. You lot at home need to you know open up another browser now and search that up on YouTube and find the commercial. I'm sure it's going to be there, mm -hmm. and check it out. And that's the car right here the Thunderbird behind me. I never know who I'm going to run into. I never know what I'm going to find out as I'm chasing these car shows for you crazy lot at home. But this is pretty cool, everybody. This has been so fun, and it has been such a pleasure and honor to meet both of you. I appreciate your time. Well, it was nice to meet you, and thanks for having us. Before we finish up, what does the future hold? What are we going to be doing besides signing autographs? Well. We're going to take these two cars and we're going to do some nice shows, you know, do some shows with them. Then we want to find a permanent home for them. Nice. But as far as our future, we we really talked about it. We just want to start doing some traveling. I mean, there's bucket list stuff, you know. We, we Car shows have been all the traveling we've done for a long time. We have two beautiful kids and four and one on the way grandchildren. Oh, nice. So, but we, we just want to take some time for ourselves and go see some things that we haven't Travel seen. around, go around, see the world, because wherever you go, I'm sure you'll be able to find a car show or so, so yeah. you can still get your fix. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.